The Department of Public Health and Human Services is pleased to bring you Aging Horizons. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Fraud, Legal Issues, Veterans Benefits and Caregiving. Aging Horizons is a program dedicated to inform and prepare Montanans on these timely issues, making a difference to you and your loved ones. Here now is today's program host. Hi folks, today on Aging Horizons, we've got a very special guest with us, Renee Libri Shanks. She's the director of the Montana SMP Project, uh, and that is an advocacy program specifically for Medicare. You know, sometimes you get that Medicare bill, you don't know for sure if it's right. The SMP counselor is the person you can call to find out. We have so much more to tell you, stay tuned. 45 years, two packs a day. It's like $80,000. I thought I was just hurting myself until I fell asleep in a chair with a cigarette. The whole house went up. I lost it all. I knew smoking was expensive, but I never thought it would cost me everything. The human heart, even at its strongest, it's a fragile muscle chest and arm pain, shortness of breath, are signs of a heart under attack. But three numbers can save a life. Dial 911 at the first sign of a heart attack. Quick response from medical experts can save your life. I was 45 and it happened to me, a heart attack. Dialing 911 saved Ryan's life. Now he's here and he's healthy. This message sponsored by Mission Lifeline Montana. Every 65 seconds, someone is affected with Alzheimer's or other dementias. Many become isolated at a time when help is most needed. If you or someone you love is affected, help is available, both for people with memory loss and their caregivers. Memory loss can feel frightening, but you are not alone. Call the free 24-7 Alzheimer's Association helpline, 800-272-3900, for guidance and support. This is Bill. He just received his new Medicare card and is following some simple rules to protect himself from fraud. He knows to never give out his Medicare, Social Security, or bank number over the phone. And this is Nancy. She knows that to detect any problems, she always reads her Medicare Summary Notice or Medicare Advantage EOB to make sure the billing is correct. Both Bill and Nancy know that anything suspicious can be reported to Montana SMP at 1-800-551-3191. Hello everyone and welcome to Aging Horizons, brought to you by the Department of Public Health and Human Services. I'm your host, Kimmy Everman. Good to be back in the studio and good to see you. And today we're going to be talking with uh, Renee Labrie-Shanks, who is our state SMP director. A very important advocacy program for Medicare beneficiaries because they really are trained well to help folks understand Medicare paperwork, and to make sure their benefits are being administered correctly. Renee, welcome. Thank you, and thanks for having me again. Oh, absolutely. It's always fun to have you with us. So tell us a little bit about, just in general, what's SMP? You know, I called it Senior Medicare Patrol, and I don't know that you guys call it that anymore. Tell me. Well, the SMP does stand for Senior Medicare Patrol, and we just kind of steer away from that a little to our acronym because we want people to know it's it's about health care, fraud, waste, and abuse. And we are the, we're the researchers of the case. If there is a case to investigate, that would be under the auspices of, of the Office of Inspector General. So SMP, in all intents and purposes, is um, helping people understand their bills and making sure that they're paid properly or they're not being used inappropriately. Um, so any, any errors, any uh, abuse, and any fraud, for sure, we want to send on to the Office of Inspector General. Right. You know, uh, Renee, we've talked about this before, but I, I think it bears mentioning again we don't have tons of abuse in, in Montana, do we? But we do have some mistakes that get made. And you guys yeah, work we, on those as well. So it's, yeah. it's not necessarily that someone is trying to defraud a patient. They might have just made a mistake. Is that correct? That is very much correct. We are a low fraud state. And some of that's to do with our population. 
And some of that's to do with uh, people with the, in the local communities knowing their providers, knowing their doctors. And some of the larger cities where people won't know who the providers are, uh, a lot of fraudsters can get away with things they wouldn't in rural areas. Mm -hmm. But we have our own sets of challenges because of that as well. Can you talk about some of those challenges? Yeah, and first I do want to kind of let people know how we are set up in the state so they know how to access us. Please do. Uh, we're Yeah, we're contracted with all of the area agencies on aging across Montana. So in every county, there will be a local coverage. So you're, not everyone has to call me in Missoula. They might be closer to Roundup or closer to, uh, well, anywhere they live, we'll have a local SMP in that area. And so by doing that, we want to be local. We want to reach people local. We're not some giant national 800 number. If you call our 800 number, you're going to reach your local office on aging. So that's really important. And the mission to the office I work out of Missoula Aging Services is to keep people independent uh, in their homes as long as possible. And SMP, this program fits under it very well because if people are scammed out of their money or out of their Medicare benefits, uh, they could easily lose their independence, dignity, and health. So it it's really something important that we want people to be aware of that they have a place to go if they have questions and if they have trouble with some of their medical bills, whether it's Medicare, Medicaid, uh, their supplemental health plans, their Medicare Advantage plans, et cetera. So I know that you have a great crew of staff and volunteers. Uh, you train them pretty well, don't you? Yes, they get now. The training is put out nationally uh, by the SMP Resource Center, and the the way the SMP program works is there is one in every state and U.S. protectorate. It's a nationwide program, so we have a lot of uh, mentorship and we have a lot of partnership across the nation, not just in Montana. And a lot of the resources they've. Uh, put a lot of time and effort into them and training all of our volunteers. Any volunteer that is uh, doing any work would be going through that and the staff across the state as well. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they are trained and they're also, a lot of them are co-SHIP counselors and the SHIP is that state health insurance assistance program, helping people understand their benefits and enrollment and a lot of complexities with that. So the, the programs being co-located like that can help a lot of people, whether they're new to Medicare, whether they've been on Medicare for years, whether they're a caregiver for someone who's on Medicare and they don't understand something or they see a pile of statements building up and they, they want a place to start, they can start at those local agencies. Yeah, that's awesome. I know we've often called SHIP and SMP two sides to the same coin because they are... Um, they do work together to bring advocacy to Medicare beneficiaries. Um, and Renee, in terms of, let's talk once more uh, bef about how people get a hold. What if they find a problem? What if a carer does or what if a beneficiary does? What should they do right away? We'd like them to just call our 800, the 1-800-551-3191 that connects them to their closest office on aging. And in these times with the people being uh, a little more isolated and un under quarantine, we we need them to just make that call first since a lot of offices are operating a little differently. Great. Well, I think that we probably are going to have to talk about some actual scams that we have had um, in the state over the last few months, although luckily, even with COVID, they haven't been awful, according to Renee. But when we come back, we'll talk about some of the ways that uh, the SMP are seeing folks being uh, taken advantage of and how they can help themselves, how they can keep themselves safe. Uh, you know, as a Medicare beneficiary, you are entitled to every benefit, and we don't want any kind of scammer or con to come and get in the way of that. And as Renee said, make it tougher for you to hang on to your independence and your dignity in your own home. We have so much more to talk about. We want to keep you safe. We want to keep you on the cuts of all the information you need, so come back.
think the most pleasant surprise when we turned 65 and signed up for Medicare Part B was finding out about our Welcome to Medicare preventive visit. It was free, and it gave us the opportunity to visit with our doctors and establish a plan for our health going forward. They reviewed our medical history, measured our height, weight, blood pressure, and counseled us on other risk factors. To learn more about Medicare's free or low-cost preventive and wellness benefits, call your local SHIP counselor at 800-551-3191. I mentioned it's free, right? Twice. Elder abuse is a growing problem, and it's happening right here in our Montana communities. At least one in 10 older adults are victims of physical or emotional abuse, financial exploitation, or neglect. To get help or report elder abuse, call your local area agency on aging or adult protective services at 1-844-277-9300. I was the last guy you'd expect to get diabetes. I was a competitive runner and I always took care of myself. So when I was diagnosed, it kind of threw me. But it's really encouraging to know I'm not alone with it. There are a lot of other people going through the same things as I am. It takes some effort. You have to keep after it. Exercise, meds, and diet are the key. But there are a lot of folks who want me to succeed. Diabetes is not the end of the world. With effort and attitude, you can have a normal life. Gentlemen, this is a secure federal facility. Do you have your Montana real IDs? ID? I am Captain Lewis, and this is Captain Clark. I'm sorry, I can't let you in. Can't go into a federal facility, can't fly. Let's go back to the river. Yes, we'll float home. Let me check the Google. What's a dam? Discover more at mtrealid.gov. Montana real ID, it's the real me. Hello everyone, welcome back to Aging Horizons. We're here with Renee Libri Shanks today and we're talking about Senior Medicare Patrol or the SMP and uh, keeping you safe, you Medicare beneficiaries, from any kind of scams or cons that might be out there. Thanks for joining us, uh, Renee, we're really happy to have you. Thank you, thanks for having me. So can you, ta can you talk a bit about the, the scams that you see. I know they, they don't change a lot, but I know that they cycle and you have different things going on at different times. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, and, and I like how you said that they cycle. I think um, it's important for people to understand that so many of these scams are, they're just like a virus, actually. Mm -hmm. hate to use that right now, but they, they are capitalizing on any new situation and morph to fit that situation, but it's really behind it, the same exact scam it's always been. Right. Some of these scams have been around since the 1600s, uh, and they're, they're the exact same their exact same format, but they're just using the different uh, things that are going on in today's world. Sure. So a big thing that happens uh, is through the telephone. People pick up that telephone. Um, there are entities out there that it's very cost effective now. People can buy technology that can make it look like they're calling from wherever they want to look like they're calling from. So it might come in as a 406 number when it's not coming anywhere near Montana, or it might come in and look like it's from an area agency on aging or Northwestern Energy or whatever. So some of the th problems that happens is, is people are connected to those phones and they need to uh, just be be wary. I would always recommend just don't pick up unless you know who it is. And then even when you do pick up, because it will leave a message if it's important, right? And then if you do pick up, because maybe you don't have caller ID, maybe you don't have a smartphone, that's fine. Just don't give out personal information over the phone. If I'm calling someone to follow up on a case, I'm follow up, following up on something they've called about. Medicare will only call someone if they're following up on something. So if somebody has not called Medicare or not asked for them to call, they're not gonna call them. And then Medicare has your information. They would never call you and say, give me your Medicare number because we're gonna mail you a new card. Okay. They're just gonna mail you a new card if that's the case. Right. They're not gonna call and ask for that. Your bank, there's been so many calls. We've had them in Montana. We just had one in the last couple of weeks where somebody called and said they were mailing out new Medicare cards. 
and the person did give their information and the way they the, the way they go about it these people are con criminals they use psychology against us they've been doing it very well um that's why they're called confidence criminals and and people shouldn't feel ashamed that they've fallen for it they need to call and let somebody know that it happened because in this instance the person gave out their new medicare number which everybody should have now as of last october actually sure. yeah. um they need to know that those Medicare numbers, even though we had no changes since 1965 and then all of a sudden we have new cards, those cards are now permanent. They're not going to be changing again anytime soon. And so when people get calls and it sounds like somebody's going to, I need to mail you out a new card, they're going to be laminated, they're going to be um, on a hard uh, composite or something, whatever it is, no. No, no, no. Medicare is not going to call you and there are no new Medicare cards coming. And please, anytime somebody asks you for anything to do with your Medicare number, your social security number, your bank account for sure, you just don't give it out mm -hmm. and either just hang up. But one of our big recommendations is to make a script and keep it by your phone. So if any, it doesn't have to do with Medicare fraud at all. It could it could be a pushy salesman for anything, but you've got a script next to your phone that just helps guide you. And you can say, thank you. I don't do business over the phone. Something that's just off the top of your head, whatever works. It just helps you stick to that script. And then you can just hang up that phone and feel like you close the conversation. Renee, that's a super idea. Um, I know that when I pick up the phone uh, to people that I don't know, I get caught off guard and I may find myself giving information I didn't mean to because I'm caught off guard. The, yes. the thought of having a little script next to me is a great idea. Yes, that's exactly what they're doing. They're catching you off guard. They have had things they've thought about and they have it all planned and they're going by a script themselves, a well-written and a well-used script, mind you. Meanwhile, you are the one on the other end, you're caught off guard, you're thinking off the top of your head, and that's when they get you more times than not. So people quit answering the phone. Uh, Medicare is not out to sell you anything. So if you get calls for test kits, I don't care if it's genetic test kits, COVID test kits, uh, anything, they're not calling you to sell you things over the phone, period, end of story. Right, right. Well, thanks for that, Renee. And um, I think one other little thing that just sort of crossed my mind is I know I've heard folks at Medicare say they don't want you to laminate your card. So that's another sort of sign that someone's trying to fool you. Yes. Um, so that, that just has, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Renee. I was going to say that's because when doctors and when offices scan them um, or copy them, when it's laminated uh, like that, it'll come out black. So they don't want you laminating it for that reason. Okay. Well, thanks. I didn't know why. So thank you for that. And I think what we're going to do is uh, we have a whole bunch more to talk about. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some COVID things in terms of stimulus checks and other scams like the genetic testing you just spoke of, uh, like the antibody testing that we hear about. Uh, we're going to talk about that. And you're going to have us, you're going to help us understand what's a scam and what isn't a scam. Okay. I'll try. Okay. Well, folks, stay with us. We have a whole lot more to talk about, and we want you to know all the information. I have so many questions about power of attorney. Well, some powers of attorney are for finances and others are for healthcare decisions. A power of attorney designates an agent who would make decisions on your behalf. While making a power of attorney, you have the ability to control your agent's power. You also have the ability to decide when that POA would take effect. Wait, am I giving away all my rights? Power of attorney isn't a license to make any decision for you, just those that you've specified. Your agent should be somebody that's working in your best interest, but it should also be somebody that you would trust. What if they try to abuse their power? Protective measures like third-party accounting secondary signatures, defined spending and gifting limits can help protect against financial exploitation. An agent's powers can always be limited by a customized power of attorney, and they can be revoked by you or the court if the power of attorney is abused. So carefully drafted estate planning documents can help ensure that your finances are monitored, but not abused. 
If you or someone you know is being exploited, please report to Aging Services Bureau at 844-277-9300 or the legal service developer at 1-800-332-2272. This message is sponsored by the DPHHS Aging Service Bureau. I take care of my wife at home. When I found out training was available, I said, sign me up. It's made a huge difference. When my husband was injured at work, it was life-altering. The class has taught me that it's okay to grieve, to ask for help, and to better cope as a caregiver. My dad lives four hours away, and the Powerful Tools class has taught me that it's okay to ask for help. I highly recommend them. To find out about this course for caregivers, go to PowerfulToolsForCaregivers.org. It's amazing the difference a little training can make. Questions about Medicare and other types of insurance? Contact the State Health Insurance Assistance Program Office to get answers to questions like, what is the difference between Medicare and Medicaid? And how do you decide if you need Medicare supplemental insurance? This insurance counseling program is not a sales program. It is available to provide answers to your insurance questions. For more information, call the State Health Insurance Assistance Program Office at 1-800-332-2272. Hi everyone and welcome back to our final segment of Aging Horizons and today we're talking about SMP or Senior Medicare Patrol with our good friend Renee Labrie Shanks in Missoula. Renee, again, so glad to have you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, we all know that COVID has really impacted every part of our life almost these last few months. Uh, it's something that's very, very uh, all-encompassing, it seems like. And I know that Medicare has seen some scams. I bet you guys in the SMP have worked on some COVID-related things. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, thanks. Yes, we have received some calls reporting that uh, there are entities calling people in Montana and trying to sell them COVID tests and also we want people to know that if they do receive any calls or see any advertisements or uh, mail or email certainly about tests or vaccines or ways to treat it that that is a scam um, there is currently none of that and when it is it will be well known it's not going to be something they will have to seek out and find right. and um yeah the testing that's been going on before covid they were they were trying to sell genetic test kits to people now they're trying to sell covid test kits to people it's the same scam um, and again we want them to be aware that this is not a thing people do not go door to door or call you to sell you test kits, yeah. um, do not fall for that one. Right. If you do feel like you need tests, whether it's for COVID or whether it's for you think you might've had it and you wanna get the antibody test, call your local provider, mm -hmm. call your local health department. That's who you call. Right, yeah, and I, I wanna just mention once again that um, for folks out in the audience, their best neighborhood information is going to come from the county health department because they have the information that's really right local where you live and they can give you the best idea of what's happening in your own community correct yes that is exactly the right message uh, and also, Renee, one of the other things that I've worried about that I've talked with you about is the stimulus checks and folks that um, maybe live in assisted living or nursing homes. Anything to say about that? Yeah, it is important that caregivers and residents of people living in assisted living or nursing homes understand that that stimulus check was not considered a resource and to just make sure that they received it. Mm -hmm. um, especially, it's the it's the folks on Medicaid that um, there was some confusion and there was a lot of confusion of their, whether it was a tax credit, whether it was a resource when it first came out, and it might have inadvertently gotten used towards resources. And we just want everyone to be aware that it is very crystal clear now that that was not intended to be a resource and everyone should have received a stimulus check. Right. And um, we're going to run the area agency on aging number on the screen uh, because that's where you want to call folks if you're worried that you didn't get one or wondering if you should have, give a call and those folks can um, assist you in trying to track that down. Um, now, what else about COVID and SMP is important? Because I know that, uh, Renee, Medicare has 
expanded some of their services, uh, like with telehealth. How does that fit in with um, fraud and abuse? Yes, thank you. We're expecting, or I'm expecting to see a lot more fraud and abuse to do with telehealth because we already had many cases of that in Montana to do with a sorts of telehealth and durable medical equipment fraud where providers people had never seen had been showing up on Medicare summary notices and billing for services that they had not provided. And that may happen with telehealth. So it's important people know that the new benefits, what they are, and if they receive them or not. So if they see them on their statements, they'll know that they have them. And telehealth is simply using a phone or video to contact a provider from another place. Right. So if they do need to talk to their provider and they can't get in, and right now they prefer people um, to, to use that option if they don't need to go in, um, please do. And just know that it'll be billed as telehealth and make sure they recognize the providers on their Medicare summary notice. Stopping fraud is always as easy as reading your Medicare summary notice or reading your Medicare Advantage explanation of benefits because that is how to recognize if something is either billed that you didn't receive or that you received something that wasn't ordered by a doctor that you know. So those are the big things. So know your, your benefits and telehealth is a new change. Hospitalizations, including extra days due to quarantine is covered by Medicare now. And then also they will cover the vaccine through Part D when and if it's discovered. Right. So hold on, but Medicare is going to cover what you need with the COVID virus. Yeah, I, I really love to, to tell folks that I think Medicare has really stepped up and uh, are really attempting to be proactive and help folks meet them where they're at, and especially in a state like Montana, that's so important. Uh, I know I've heard from lots of folks using the telemedicine feature who love it. My husband has used it twice and he's quite ill, so keeping him at home and safe, that's a great, great option for me and I bet for lots of folks out there. So we just have a few seconds left, Renee. What do you want folks to know the most about SMP? Call your local area agency on aging, that 1-800 number. And if you want to look at specific fraud, go to hashtag SMP Watch COVID-19 on YouTube. Um, there are lots of videos out there, but we, we want them to understand the benefits and understand what's happening and don't give out personal information over the phone. Right. And it's even more important to make that message clear because so many of us are alone and isolated right now and may may give forth information just because we feel like talking to somebody for the first time in a week. So, Renee, thank you so much. Thank you for all you thank do. You. Thank you for your counselors. We really appreciate all their work. And folks, call your local area agency on aging. They'll help. See you next time. Special thanks to the Department of Public Health and Human Services for their continued support. Hosts on Aging Horizons are program specialists at the Montana Office on Aging. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions. For more information about Aging Horizons, call the Department of Public Health and Human Services toll-free at 800-332-2272.